Hello friends, I hope you are well, I hope you are safe. It is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are in the world, whatever it is you may be doing. Thank you for joining me on this rather, well it feel, kind of feels like winter has settled in <laughs> today. Today feels like winter and we haven't had any of this sort of winter business for a very long time. So um, it's very fitting that today we are doing our first soup recipe, first soup cooking class of the season. <laughs> Hello to Kate and to Colleen, also to Jean as well for joining us. Nice to see you guys. So yes, we are doing soup and I am doing a very, very simple soup. And I want to teach you guys soups that are simple because soup is something that is so comforting, so incredibly good for us when we were using the right ingredients. And hi to Rui as well, joining us from WA. I can't imagine it feels like winter in WA at the moment. <laughs> it's a bit wintry here, but this soup is so good. It doesn't have to be winter to have it. It is one of those soups. It is full of fiber, full of nutrients, full of goodness. And in fact, this particular soup can be whipped up in a couple of minutes. It's really simple to make. And that's what I want to teach you guys, is these soups that can be just kind of whipped up really quickly. Because then you know that even if you look in your fridge and you're like, oh, what are we going to make? You could, like, quite seriously, whip up a delicious soup very, very quickly. And it's so incredibly satisfying. So come on down to my vent. Let's get into the recipe. I haven't even told you what sort of soup we're making. <laughs> Well, what we're making, you can see I've got this beautiful bowl of gorgeous vegetables here. The soup that we are making today contains um, three major vegetables, but it's completely plant, so it's vegan friendly. I have here a fennel bulb, it's going to be fennel, and the other main vegetable is this gorgeous asparagus. But as well as that, I'm also going to be adding in some spring onions, also known as green onions. They're going to go in there as well. So the first thing that you want to do when you are prepping up your soup is we're going to prepare the vegetables first. And that is pretty simple to do. So I'm going to take up my fennel. And you want sort of one large fennel. This makes uh, around about uh, three serves. This is enough for three portions. So you want to take a large fennel. That, in my mind, is not a large fennel. That's quite a small or medium-sized fennel. So take those off. But don't throw those away. Because this can be used like you would normally use celery. It's kind of a, quite a similar texture and flavor to celery. So don't throw these tops away. Don't throw the fronds away as well because the fronds can be used as herbs or garnish. So definitely keep all that sort of stuff intact. Don't throw that stuff away. I'm going to put it off to one side. So taking up your fennel bulb, if it's quite a big one, you may have find that you might have to just take off the outer leaves because they can be a little bit on the woody side. But because mine's quite nice and small, I'm actually going to use pretty much the whole thing. So the way to prep up your fennel is cut off the base just so you've got a nice stable um, place to work from and then cut it in half and we're going to be cutting our fennel into small pieces so it cooks nice and fast so you cut it into quarters and then it's got this hard core there so you just want to take out that core and that can then be thrown into the bin and then you just want to just cut them into small pieces nothing too big Otherwise, take too long for your soup to cook. So the smaller, the better. In fact, one of the key things to, I suppose, to be mindful of when you're making the soup is making sure that all the vegetables are around about the same size. So we've taken out that little core there. And you know, one of the great things about fennel is it's just so versatile. I know for some people who have been... Uh, who have tried fennel and they've had it raw through a salad, it can be a bit sort of in your face. You know? <laughs> like literally it feels like it's just punched you in the face because it's pretty full on. It's kind of got um, aniseed or licorice flavours to it when it's raw. But when it's cooked, it's very, very mild. So just remember that. You don't have to, um, you know, you don't just have to eat it raw. Upon cooking, it, the flavour does change quite significantly and it becomes very, very mild with virtually none of that licorice, those licorice aromas. So I've got now these gorgeous spring onions and they are at a really good price at the moment and they're wonderful as well as you can see, just absolutely gorgeous. And we're gonna be using four stalks and you just want to just chop through those stalks. Once again, don't, you know, you don't wanna to go too big because you don't want the soup to take too long to cook. So cutting right through, and if the 
tops of your spring onions are a little bit on the you know, dry side or they don't look too good, then just throw those in the bin. You don't have to use all of those. And now onto our third vegetable, and we're using asparagus. So when it comes to asparagus, and one of my absolute favorite vegetables, it's really easy to tell what part of the asparagus you, you eat and what part you don't eat. And the way that you do that is hold your asparagus spear in your hand and then just allow it to naturally break. And that part where it naturally breaks, this is going to be quite um, fibrous and woody down this end, whereas this is a lovely tender bit. So these, this is the part that we're not going to be putting into the soup. But what you can do is just take off the absolute ends of the asparagus so it's just you know it's a bit it's not as dry and then cut them into sort of quite small pieces like that and they pickle really well they pickle really really good so you're not going to be wasting even that just throw these into your pickle jar and they are fabulous after about three or four days you've got literally pickled asparagus so it is a type of vegetable that there is very little waste from, which is always quite fantastic. So I'm taking off those woody ends. I know those are the parts that are going to go into the pickle jar, which is great. And then I'm left with the lovely tender bits. Now I am going to be keeping just a couple of couple of um, stalks there, keeping that for garnish. So you know we're not going to cook those, but we are going to be cooking the rest. So once again, just take your asparagus, cut it into pieces around about, can you see that, around about that big? Is what you're after and when I'm looking around at the rest of our vegetables that's pretty much all the vegetables done that's our prep done see it doesn't take long and I'm just going to move this off to the side because what I would like to do is to grab up my wok but you can use a pot but the reason I'm using a wok you can use a wok too to make soup the reason I'm using a wok is because I want you guys to be able to see inside of it if I had a really tall pot that just wouldn't work at all so we're going to turn on our, our gas, so I'm using the large flame, and I've got this on, I'm going to be putting it on medium to high to begin with. So now that all our vegetables are pretty much done, which is just fabulous, all that's left for us is to start about thinking to put everything into our pot. So I'm literally just going to take up my handfuls of my vegetables. And by the way, I forgot to say, the asparagus, it was about two bunches of asparagus. So take out my vegetables, and they're just literally going straight into the wok. Told you it was easy. <laughs> Told you it was really easy. Along with that, I'm going to be taking some of our fresh ginger. Ginger is amazing with all these flavors that we have in here. It works so incredibly well with fennel. It literally is a marriage made in heaven. So feel free to be generous with that gorgeous ginger. I've got a tablespoon of finely chopped ginger in there. I'm also going to be putting in some garlic. Now, you could use raw garlic, like finely chopped. If you do, half a a tablespoon but I'm actually putting in some roast garlic because I've just roasted off some garlic and it's absolutely gorgeous roast garlic is a lot more milder than raw garlic so if you love garlic but want to kiss people <laughs> or talk to someone without smelling like without, without smelling like um, garlic raw uh, roast garlic is the way to go so I'm going to be putting in a tablespoon of the garlic I'll show you the roast garlic I've got it right here just give that a bit of a toss. So what I do with my, to roast my garlic is I put my, you know, I just put the bulbs, uh, sorry, the cloves, skin on into the air fryer, 200 degrees, which is 390 degrees for around about 10 minutes, depending on the size. So around about, depending on the size of your garlic cloves, it'll take around about anything from sort of seven to 12 minutes. And then what you've basically got at the end of it is this wonderful bit of roast garlic. And then you throw it into your, whoop, one of those, and blend it up, put it in a jar, lasts in the fridge for ages and ages. And what you, of course, now have is a lovely, sweet um, garlic that you can add into anything that you want. I absolutely adore it. And in this soup, I have to say it's marvellous, but if you don't have roast garlic, just go with the fresh garlic, but only half, yeah? Just half a tablespoon, because you don't want to, which is about two teaspoons, because you don't want to blow yourself away or blow anyone else away. <laughs> it can be pretty full on. Okay. Another thing that I'm going to be adding into our soup, um, this is an optional extra, but once again, it tastes amazing. 
So, you know, I'll leave it up to you. This here is just a coriander or cilantro. So, oh, come on down so you can see me. I'm just going to go chop, chop, chop. So, I'm just taking off the, the, that end of it. Don't need that. That can go there. And then, just roughly chopping stalks and all. Roughly chopping your cilantro or your coriander. I know there's some people who don't like it. So, you don't have to add it if you don't like it. <laughs> It's, I'll leave that up to you. you don't, honestly, you don't have to add it, but it does go amazingly well with the vegetables that we have in this wok right now. So it's been a couple of minutes of, you know, just every now and then coming over here and giving a bit of a stir and, uh, you know, making sure nothing's burning. Next thing that we're going to be doing, grabbing up our kombu water. So once again, really good for our iodine, really good for our thyroid. And you want to add into your wok or your pot 600 mils, which is about 1.2 pints of our kombu water. A good sort of way to judge it is that the kombu water should just cover the vegetables. That's a pretty good judge of whether you've got enough in there. Right, I'm going to be turning it up to full now. And we're going to bring it to the boil. So now that that's in there, in order to help to maintain these gorgeous colours that you know we're going to have from this soup, I'm just going to add a little bit more. I realise I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit out. There we go. Just to maintain this wonderful colours that we're going to get from our gorgeous soup here, I've got a little bit of baking soda here, and I'm going to be adding in literally a pinch of baking soda. Nothing more than that. Okay, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> that much. <laughs> Just a pinch. You don't want to add too much, otherwise it's going to have that baking soda. That won't be very nice. But what the baking soda does, very clever, it helps to lock in the colours of our vegetables. And even though, yes, we will be, you know, we will be creating a bit of a boil from our vegetables and boiling our soup, it'll still be a fairly decent colour when we're finished. So right now, all we need to do, like that's literally the hard work is done. And as you can see, it's actually not that hard. That's pretty simple. What you want to do now is you want to bring your soup to the boil, which we are waiting on right now. And while that is happening, we can have a little bit of a chat. So I really want to, I really want to explain to you guys just how good this soup is. Like number one thing is that of course there's no gluten, there's no sugar, there's no dairy, which is all fantastic. Um, during part of our boost camp that we've currently got going on with a couple hundred people doing our boost camp together, one of the areas that we touched on is, is eating foods that don't spike your insulin response. Basically what that means is that you want to eat foods that don't raise your blood glucose and don't, um, and don't raise your insulin too high. Because when, when our insulin is high by eating foods that are, that are high in uh, processed foods, high in sugar, high in you know, white flour, rice, potatoes, all sorts of things, deep fried, processed, McDonald's, KFC, all those types of foods are going to raise our insulin. And when our insulin is high, and insulin is a hormone, what happens, but this is, this is, and, it's, and it's raised by the food we eat, so when our insulin is high because of the types of food that we've been consuming, what then happens is that our body goes into fat storage mode and not fat usage mode. So if you are someone who's struggling with um, you know, getting down to a goal weight that you might have, you may want to look at your insulin and whether you're consuming too many foods that are spiking your insulin. Well, this here, this is all good. This is non-insulin spiking food. In fact, it's really alkaline as well. So what we have here is an anti-inflammatory, anti-insulin spiking soup, which is so easy to make. But as well as that, you've got these incredible vegetables um, that we have in there as well. Of course, we've got that wonderful fennel. Now, fennel is really, really fiber rich. It is something ridiculous like 95% of people who eat the standard Australian, uh, New Zealand, American, uh, British diet. So basically, we live out of the supermarket and processed foods and jars and bottles and stuff. 95% of people who eat that standard diet, that regular diet of processed foods, are deficient in fiber. 
and not having enough fiber in your diet can be so dangerous. It can lead to all sorts of chronic diseases. There's constipation that you've got to be concerned about as well. It can lead to certain cancers, cancer of the colon, cancer of the bowel, you know, all sorts of things through our digestive system. Whereas fennel is incredibly fiber rich. And not only is it fiber rich, it's also really high in potassium, which is vitamin K. It's got amazing amounts of vitamin C and all the B vitamins. And those are the ones that make you feel good. They're really good, good for making you feel pretty happy. And um, it it's lacks cholesterol. So if you're someone who suffers from high cholesterol, then you want to get more fennel into your diet pretty much. That's what you want to do because it's really, really good for cholesterol and it supports the heart. Um, asparagus, as I was saying, you know, the good old asparagus spears. Um, get into your asparagus now because it's coming out of season. Like, it's, it's we're almost out of asparagus season. Um, it's been quite a late asparagus season. And this is not going to be around for much longer, so you want to get into this soup. So asparagus, really nutrient dense. Once again, good amounts of fiber. But it also has vitamins A, C, and K in there. So once again, vitamin, vitamin C, vitamin A, which is really good for our immune system. So if your journey here is to do with weight loss, eat more asparagus. <laughs> really low in calories, pretty much no calories in this dish. This is quite amazing. In the soup, uh, it's boiling away nicely. I'll just let you know that it's, it's going really, if you want to come have a look, it's doing really well. I'm pretty happy. Uh, you can't really see, but trust me, it's doing good. We want to we sort of cook it until all the vegetables are soft. So that's what we're sort of aiming for. So yep, you're going into the asparagus. You want to get into the fennel. In fact, you want to get into the plants, right? Eat as many plants as you can. Like literally fill your plate full of plants. And then protein in moderation. Obviously, other types of things like, like dairy and stuff, we, we try to, um, we definitely try to replace. We don't want to have too much dairy in our diet. Um, and we want to replace it with something that's, because dairy as well, does spike your insulin response so it puts you into fat storage mode rather than fat usage mode so you know we do things without dairy and we add in all these natural really good healthy fats as well so um come on down here see what's happening it's coming along nicely i haven't added any seasoning yet i will though don't worry i will add some seasoning but right now we're looking pretty good I'm just having a little, the smell is amazing, it smells, it smells so good. What I'm going to be doing now, just having a bit of a taste of that broth. Because, you know, the, the flavours of from the, the vegetables have managed to seep out into there as well. Already we've got such a good flavour, and we haven't even added any seasoning. So, I'm going to taste it again, like later. But you want to cook your vegetables. For around, it's going to probably take about 10 minutes to get them nice and tender. About 10 minutes of cooking. And keep an eye on it, because you don't want them to be like really overcooked. But you're looking at about 10 minutes. And of course the best way to tell if your vegetables are done is to literally just give them a bit of a squish. Like I've got a piece of fennel here. I'm going to put it onto my chopping board. Give it a bit of a squish. Now it's still a little bit hard. Have a bit of a try. It's nearly there though. So the next thing I can think about is, would you believe, probably what really makes this dish, in my opinion, sing. And that is what you use to garnish it with. The gar it's, it's literally, for me it feels like it's all in the garnish. So, come on back down to my chopping board here. I'm going to show you just some of the ideas of how you can garnish up the soup. So of course, one of the main ideas that we're talking about before is just to take your little asparagus there and chop it because did you know this is so cool you can eat raw asparagus it is delicious so you just want to chop it into rounds because not only is it add a wonderful texture to your soup but you will love the flavor of raw asparagus it's i had no idea you know these all these things that I'm teaching you guys is, is literally trial and error. And um, when it came to asparagus, someone once served me a raw asparagus salad. And I was like, how dare you? <laughs> that doesn't sound good at all. And how wrong I was. It was amazing. So, you know, don't be shy when it comes to adding raw asparagus. But, you know, cut it into smaller pieces because you definitely, you know, 
don't want to have a huge big chunk that you've got to work your way through it's way better when you are doing it in that that sort of size and it looks really gorgeous too so that is one way that we're going to one thing that we're going to be doing on the top of our gorgeous soup another thing that i want you guys to think about would you believe that lemon goes really well with the vegetables we have bubbling away in our little pot here so you can either juice your lemon or of course zest your lemon or both so i'm going to put those there because we will be definitely getting into that and another one i want you to just trust me on this rosemary goes so well with this soup the flavors of this soup so um, when it comes to rosemary you don't need much you know a little a little goes a long way so you just want to strip back the uh the stalk there and then once again, let's just go for a, a real rough chop of the rosemary. Fresh is best. I definitely wouldn't try this with dried rosemary. I think that would be pretty manky. I, would, I don't think that would be very nice at all. So um, I haven't tried it. I don't think I'd want to because you really want the vibrancy from the fresh rosemary. So go with fresh here. Don't worry about the dry. If you don't have any fresh rosemary, you know, you don't have to add it. Rather than adding dry, I just would leave it out. But... As I was saying, it works really, really well. And do you remember those fronds we had before? Where are they? Do you remember our little fronds coming in for landing? These as well make a really, really nice garnish. So that's why I say never throw out your fennel fronds and the, these little stalky bits. You can use those in stocks and soups and all sorts of stuff to replace celery. And then the fennel is really nice as a garnish or as an actual herb going through a salad. Now, garnish is good, as long as, but the garnish has got to taste good, otherwise, bleh, you know, like, I remember the days, oh my gosh, I remember the days in restaurants when I first started where this would be on your plate. You'd order food and they'd stick a tree, and you'd be like, I can't eat that. Every garnish that you put onto your food must be edible. I, there's no such thing as just putting on, like, literally. If you see someone put a tree on their food and serve it to you, like, send it back to them and said, I, I, I don't need a tree. I don't need a tree with my, with my dinner, thank you. So everything we put onto our plate should be able to be consumed. Otherwise, what's the point, right? So soup is looking good. I'm just going to test it again. As I was saying, I'm going to test it just to make sure that we've got tenderness happening there. I've lost my spoon already. Not surprised. Oh, there it is. All right. Let's have a little look. And yes, it is going to be quite a thick soup. Definitely quite a thick soup. So I'm just going to take up a piece of fennel, see what we got. Oh gosh, it's so tender. But what you may notice is really cool. Look how green the asparagus still is, right? You would expect after that type of work, it'll be pretty brown. That is all thanks to our wonderful, gorgeous baking soda. Right, I'm going to put a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a bit, just feels like it's a little bit on the empty side. Alright, where is my little machine? One second while I track down my machine. There we go. So you can either use at this point in time, you can either use a food processor or you can use what I have here. I'm going to try and come as close to you guys as possible or you can come as there we go. So a food processor or a handheld blender. And all you're wanting to do now is to blend it all up. Like I said, this is easy stuff. Oh my gosh, it's so green. It is so gorgeous. Give it a blend. Of course, be really careful. You don't want hot vegetables hitting you. So it's definitely, if you've got a stick blender, do this all. I'm going to bring stuff on me. Do this in the pot that you cook it in because you just don't want to um, endanger yourself with this hot liquid. Oh my gosh, it is wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, that is it. So if you're looking for a puree um, of your vegetables, if you like your soup to be less thick, then you do what I just did. I'll do a little bit more, and you can just add a little bit more kombu to it. 
Just a little bit, there we go. A little bit of kombu. Just gonna pour it down. Just a little bit, you can kind of see. But look at the color. It's fabulous, right? Absolutely fabulous color. But how does it taste? Because it's all in the taste thing. And you consider all those flavors we got in here, you know, it's I just know it's gonna be delicious and probably just needs some seasoning, you know, it just needs to be balanced out a bit. It's a bit of a taste. And yep, just need some seasoning. Mmm, my gosh. Gorgeous. Right. A little bit of mineral salt goes in there. A bit of black pepper if you want. Up to you, of course. A bit of black pepper. Give it another stir. You know, this is the most one of the most crucial parts of cooking. And it's one that is often overlooked, even in some restaurants. It's the tasting. Because you, you know, you're not, you don't know what you're going to serve, especially if you're serving it to other people. You want to make sure that it's delicious. And sometimes it just needs a little something, right? And that little something, oh my gosh, wow, gorgeous. That little something, something is, some, is sometimes just a little bit of mineral salt. That's all you need, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So our soup is done. We just need to garnish. I need to stop eating it because I need to. I show you guys. <laughs> What it looks like when we serve it. Alright, here's my bowl. So obviously serve it hot. Obviously. We want to serve our soup hot. And as I was just saying, this is about three portions. If you follow the recipe, and I will be releasing the recipe to you guys tomorrow. And by the way, very exciting. We have our first in real life cooking class happening on the 15th. The 15th of May, which is a Saturday, here in my kitchen. If anyone is interested, I'm hoping Mahe will throw up a link now. We're going to garnish with our asparagus. Our raw asparagus! It's such a beauty. Like, oh goodness me. And it looks amazing on our soup as well. Just that little bit of raw asparagus. And let's also put a bit of that gorgeous rosemary on there. Textures, textures, textures. We're going to be putting some of the fennel frond. And as I alluded to, this little guy here is amazing. A little zest just on top. Like I said, you could add lemon juice if you wanted to as well. If you want a little bit of a, a bite to it, a little acidic bite. I quite like the zest because I do feel that every time I have a spoonful, I get this amazing zest in my mouth, which I really, really like. And if you wanted to, now this is just a, you know, you don't have to. This is if you want to. You could also... Do something like this, a little bit of coconut milk, put that on top, and it just literally needs a drop, right? Nothing more than a drop. A little bit of that goes on. Grab yourself up a spoon, give it a little bit of a stir in so you've got some colour going on there as well. And what you are essentially left with is just the most amazing wee soup. Asparagus and fennel. Very exciting. Asparagus and fennel soup, perfect. Perfect for tonight, because tonight's a little bit nasty, but it's gorgeous because it's raining. We all need a good bit of rain every now and then. But this soup, come on, have a look. As you can see, it is stunning. It tastes amazing. There's so much goodness. Nutrient dense, non-insulin spiking, anti-inflammatory, good if weight loss is your goal, amazing as well if health is your Part of your goal as well so don't forget if you want this recipe i will be releasing it tomorrow if you want to join me in the kitchen live saturday the 15th of may in my kitchen we'll be doing a food tour first we'll be doing a local food tour we're going to pick up what we're going to be cooking we're going to come back it's an intimate class in my kitchen i think mahi has just shared the link with you guys you are welcome to join me uh, tickets are selling fast, but there is a couple tickets left, and then it's, that's it. My, you know, my kitchen's quite small, so I can only have a very intimate number for this class, but we'll do some amazing food shopping first. We'll go through you know, the, the local um, stores. I'll show you guys how to shop. I'll show you guys you know, what to look for when it comes to fresh, healthy, delicious ingredients. It's just going to fill your pantry with delight. And then we'll come back, and we'll cook some food. And then we'll eat it. <laughs> it's very exciting. I can't wait. So thank you for joining me tonight. I look forward to hopefully meeting some of you in person very, very soon as we continue to do these live cooking classes. All right, guys, take care. Enjoy. Enjoy this recipe. Look out for it tomorrow. It's coming at you 
on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Take care, guys. It's been a pleasure. Bye.